Upon reaching an old age, the princess of Amoakuni, Princess Kikuri, is getting weak. Thus, she discusses the ceremony, which will happen for the first time in 60 years, to her guards, the Twelve Shinsho. In the ceremony, the princess will be appointing a new reigning princess in her place. In another world lives Hinohara Arada, whose school life is all about getting bullied, having no friends, and being a loser. For the first time in a while, he made a best friend named Subaru, who he overhears talking to Katawaki's friends and denies that he has been friends with Arada. Meanwhile, Arada and Amo Akumini is getting forced by Makari, his elder, to be raised as a woman and join the reigning ceremony as the new princess. Arada violently refuses not just because he is initially a man, but also he does not have an Amatsuriki, a power that is needed to be a princess and is only bestowed to women. Makari explained that Arada needs to go to the ceremony because their clan has not been blessed with a daughter in many years, and it has been declared that if they do not offer a daughter, the entire Heim clan will be purged as punishment for treason. Kovanoa dresses up Arata as a girl as they get ready to attend the ceremony. Arata tells Kovanoa to run away with the villagers to a place far away while he spends three days as a girl in the ceremony. Arata meets with Princess Kikuri and is about to be reigned as the new princess when one of the twelve Shinsho, Kanaji, appears and kills Princess Kikuri. Kanaji, in behalf of the twelve Shinsho, proclaims that they have started a revolution. Arata runs away from the ceremonial place while Kanaji announces to the citizens that the princess has been killed and the murderer came in the guise of a woman named Arata. Arata ran towards Kano Forest, which is rumored to be eating humans alive. While the two Arata in different worlds both feel distressed, they summon a power that has let them exchange places wherein Hinohara Arata finds himself in the Kando Forest instead. Hinohara Arata meets Kanaji and his troops and runs away from them. Suddenly, he gets teleported to another area in the forest where he meets Kotoha, who embraces him as Master Arata. Konova brings Hinohara Arata in their home and explains the situation with Princess Kikuri to the Makari. He explains his situation with Timakari, who immediately understands that he has switched places with Master Arata. Meanwhile, Kanaji arrives at their place and threatens to kill Kotova. Kotova refuses to say a thing because of his trust in Master Arata, which encouraged Hinohara Arata to make a move. He fights with Kanaji using a powerful Hayagami he made appear. Hinohara Arata was able to release a Kamui from the sword which nullified Kanaji's Homura. Kanaji claims Hinohara was also a show, a warrior able to wield Hayagami, weapons with the power of the gods. On the other hand, Master Arata appears in modern-day Japan and meets Hinohara's family. Kanaji and his men appear before Hinohara and Kotoha as they capture Makari whom they threaten Hinohara with to kill if he resists to come. Kanaji successfully captures Hinohara. Hinohara and Master Arata's necklaces given by Kotoha gets connected, and they are able to see each other from different worlds. Master Arata tells Hinohara about the crime Kanaji and the Twelve Shinsho committed. Shortly after, the trial for the assassination of the princess began where they have decided to kill Hinohara. However, Kanaji decided to have Hinohara exiled in Gatoya, where they believe is a living hell. As Hinohara gets aboard on his way to Gatoya, Kotoha joins him and gives him the Hayagami. Suddenly, Kotoa and Hinohara get to meet Princess Kikuri, who has preserved her life through her last ounce of Amatsuriki, through the necklace. Princess Kikuri asks Hinohara to lead Amoakuni in her place and to bring his Hayagami to her before she finally dies. Kotoha and Hinohara reach Katoya where they get attacked by two kids. Suddenly, the hour of reckoning starts where Warden Satsuga, the watchman of Katoya, chooses two criminals and eats them. After failing to make the Hayagami appear once again, Kotoha appears and leads Hinohara to a place where he can bathe while she heals his wound from the fight with the kids. Suddenly, the hour of reckoning starts once more and separates Kotoha and Hinohara. Kotoha falls underground while Hinohara gets chased by the criminals for killing the princess. Osun, a woman who once helped them, appears before Hinohara and told him that Kanet, the kid who attacked him, has taken Kotoha somewhere. Hinohara meets Kene and fights with him. Jinchi wakes up and tells Kanek that Hinohara actually saved him. Hinohara and Jinchi return to where Kotoha is and heals Jinchi's wounds. Jinchi informs Kotoha and Hinohara that Warden Satsuga is his show and they cannot escape from him. The reckoning begins once again and heads for Kanet. As Hinohara was about to get eaten as well, Jinchi took his place and got eaten instead. Kotoha and Hinohara, desperate to save Jinchi and Kanet, went through the pipes to find a way to save them. Meanwhile, Jinchi and Kane wake up with their hands tied with the pipes. Kotoha and Hinohara find their way through the pipes when they meet Osom who tries to stop them. Kanet tries to plead for their lives to Satsuga. However, they were told to fight against one another and whoever wins shall be freed. Hinohara arrives just in time and gets attacked by Satsuga. However, Jinchi accidentally kills Kanet, 
who provoked him on purpose. Assuming that Jinchi will be freed, Satsuka ties him up once again saying that he's not getting out alive as well because he just committed a crime. Hinohara takes out his Hayagami and frees Jinchi. Satsuka's pipes appear behind Hinohara and tries to eat him but fails. Hinohara, out of desperation, finally makes the Hayagami appear after several tries and was able to nullify Satsuka's power and make him appear. Satsuka's body is stabbed with his Hayagami and is tied to the pipes. As Hinohara touches Satsuka's Hayagami, he sees Satsuka's memories where he was betrayed by a friend and created Gatoya with the power of demon out of rage. The criminals push Hinohara to finish Satsuka off and avenge them. However, Hinohara drops his sword and releases Satsuka from the demonized Hayagami, absorbing the demon himself. Hinohara finally saved Satsuka and was able to resist the demon from absorbing him too. Satsuka disappears as he and his Hayagami submits to Hinohara's Hayagami. Katoya changes and all the people taken by the reckoning appeared alive. However, Kanaji arrives at Katoya, but Hinohara was already on the run together with Kinchi, Kane, and Konoha. Satsuga reveals to Kanaji that Hinohara's Hayagami is the sword of origins that will rule over the world. Arriving at Narutaki, where they escaped, Jinchi found some of his acquaintances from his village and as well as his mother. Kanan explained to Hinohara that only a princess or a king can take over a nation. A king is the highest of all the show. The twelve Shinsho once fought over this throne until Princess Kikuri came and took the throne. Jinchi went with his mother to the border, away from the war, leaving Kanet with Kotoa and Hinohara to travel to the capital. As they travel, they encounter an angry and aggressive Muru that chased them. The Muru was angry because a girl took its egg to feed to her mistress. Arata falls unconscious due to fatigue. Soon, they were invited to Ohika's house, where Hinohara recuperates. However, Kanet tells Hinohara that Ohika is Kanaji's Zokusho, a show who serves the Twelve Shinsho. Monika explains to them that in order to become a king, a show must be able to submit everyone to him and unite the Hayagami. He also tells them that he knows Satsuka submitted himself to the show who is under suspicion for killing the princess. However, he does not believe any of this because Satsuka's Kamui allows him to see one's true nature. So if submitted to him voluntarily, then that show is no criminal. Kanaji finds is all of his men slain by Akachi. He believes that the last one alive might be Ohika, However, Akachi already arrived at Oika's village. Akachi informed Ohika of Kanaji's crime and his true intentions as he asked him to be his Zokusho instead. Ohika does not believe Akachi and sworn his loyalty to Kanaji even if what he told was true. Akachi threatens Ohika by holding Fuyo, his wife, as a hostage, making Ohika submit himself and his Hayagami to Akachi. However, after having Ohika submitted to him, Akachi still kills his Fuyo. Just in time, Kanaji appears to face Akachi. The both of them relise their Hayagami and engage to a fight. Akachi dodges all of Kanaji's attacks and destroys his airship. Due to a strong force brought by Kanaji and Akachi, it caused an explosion making Hinohara release his Hayagami to protect his friends. Akachi showed Kanaji all his Zokusho that is already submitted to him as he asked for Kanaji's Hayagami as well. Akachi tortures Kanaji until he submits to him, not until Hinohara appears and tries to stop Akachi, who just fled the scene. Kanet provokes a depressed Hinohara to put up a fight with the Twelve Shinsho to prevent them from killing more people. Kodoa tells Hinohara that his Hayagami might be the swords of origin that doesn't fight. Hinohara tells Honi that he might be able to make Olika return back to life using the Princess Kikuru's power. Meanwhile, in the modern-day Japan, Master Arata meets with Katawaki. Master Arata approaches Katawaki unknowingly which enrages him, however, Arata's mother takes him and informs their principal of his amnesia. Katawaki's gang later on invites Master Arata on the rooftop where they accuse him of faking his amnesia. Master Arata figured out that they aren't really Hinohara's friends, unlike what he thought and lands a blow on Katawaki, which makes him unconscious. Meanwhile, Hinohara, Kotoha, and Kanek are on the rest because of Kotoha's injury. While Kanek finds Kotoha herbs, Hinohara wanders when his necklace lights up, signaling a connection with Master Arata from another world. Hinohara and Master Arata successfully connects through the necklace and Hinohara informs Master Arata of what is going on currently in Amoa Kuni. Kanek, on the other hand, finds the herbs he needs for Kotoa's injury. However, upon picking up the herb, fire bursts through the surface, trapping Kanek. Hinohara meets with Kanaji who wants to take his Hayagami and threatens his life. As Kanaji was about to kill Hinohara, Kotoa stops him, however Kotoa gets stuck in fire caused by the lava flow that runs along the underground vein of the area. Hinohara runs inside the fire and protects Kotoha, which reminds Kanaji of his trauma. Kanaji runs towards the fire and saves the two of them. 
As Kotova helped Kanaji heal his burn that resurfaced, he tells them his story and trauma. Kanaji met Akachi and Emisu when they were still a child. However, one night, the servants revolted from the Lord and burnt their domain, which caused Kanaji, Akachi, and Emisu to run and escape. Kanaji and Emisu were the only one who escaped, leaving Akachi, who volunteered to be left alone. Kanaji and Emisu encountered Ohika while traveling, and he let them stay in his village. However, Kanaji fell sick, and Emisu insisted to pick some herbal medicine for him, even when she was warned by Ohika that the underground veins are active. Emisu still went and got killed by the fire that burst through the surface. Out of rage, Kanaji called out Homura, who took a liking to him and chose him as his show. Hinohara offers Kanagi to join their group. Kanaji accepted Hinohara's offer and joined their travel. Meanwhile, Kataweki rages, remembering what Master Arata had done to him. Master Arata meets with Suguru and asks him unknowingly about being friends. Suguru bursts into tears in front of Master Arata as he apologizes and tells him he had no choice when he told Kataweki's gang that they were not friends. Hinohara and his group arrive at Yorinami's domain, when the twelve Shinsho and the show of a water Hayagami. On the other hand, the six of the twelve Shinsho, who has never revealed their faces even within the ceremony, sends out Harunawa, one of the six, to eliminate Hinohara after knowing that he is from another world. In Kando Forest, Harunawa opens up the path to the other world and uses Kadoeki's hatred to successfully switch places with him and kill Hinohara. Upon switching, Harunawa uses his ability to show Kadawaki all of the things Hinohara had done in Amawa Kuni, as he understands that the Hinohara he has met in his world was a fake. The five of the twelve Shinsho informs Kadawaki of Hinohara's Hayagami, and tells him to also become a show to defeat Hinohara himself. They give him a Hayagami that can only defeat Hinohara and his Tsukuyo. As Orochi hit Hayagami responds to Kadawaki and becomes its show, Hinohara felt a throbbing pain to where he keeps his Tsukuyo. Hinohara appears before Hinohara and his group as he attacks him with Orochi, which Hinohara counters with his Tsukuyo. Kadawaki insults Hinohara and reminds him of his past, causing Hinohara's Tsukuyo to be demonized and be filled with hatred. Kotoho stops Hinohara's demonification, just as the six Shinsho fetches and stops Kadawaki. Hinohara drops his Tsukuyo, which Kanaji took advantage of, he ran away with the sword. Hinohara confesses to Kotoa that he is not Master Arata and explains the whole switching situation to him. He also tells her the reason why Kadawaki and him are at odds. Kanaji comes back with Kanit to give back Hinohara's Tsukuyo. Kanaji practices combat with Hinohara as he purposely throws his Tsukuyo down the cliff, saying that it is useless to him because he just submits to his fears and gets demonized. Hinohara successfully finds his Tsukuyo as he remembers his past with Kadawaki. Hinohara and his group head to Yorunami, however, Hinohara tells them that he does not want to meet Yorunami and wants to meet his Zokusho instead. Suhiro, Yorunami's Zokusho, meets them at the entrance of Suzukura, the rumored perfect city of Amua Kuni, and takes them to work. Hinohara meets with Suhiro privately and asks him about Yorunami. Hinohara and Kanit help a child, Ruka, being abused at work and get invited to his house as Hinohara slowly debunks the truth about Suzukura being perfect. Inohara and his group plan to help Ruka get out of Suzukura safely. Akachi attacks the six Shinsho's airship which provoked Kadawaki into fighting with him. Kadawaki asks Akachi to team up with him so they could beat Hinohara and Kanaji together. Akachi tells him that he won't be able to defeat Hinohara while having the phantom of the bond reflected in his eyes. Akachi then blinds Kadawaki's right eye. As Hinohara and his group leave Ruka out of the city, Suhiro stops them as he finally reveals himself to be Yorunami's number one Zokusho Hiruko. Hiruko attacks Hinohara as Kanek gets surprised that Hiruko's Kamui is money. Hiruko asks Arata to bring back Yorunami's former self as he tells Ruka that he does not need to leave the city anymore for he will defy Yorunami and change the city. Hinohara runs off when he hears Kotoha's screams and finds out Kotoha is being attacked by the nearby sea, controlled by Yorunami. Just before Hinohara makes his move, the sea has already taken Kotoha. Hinohara charges immediately towards Tamiori, where he sees Kotoha imprisoned in a water cell. Yorinami appears before Hinohara and asks him to submit to him. On the other hand, Agachi gives his own eye to Katawaki on seeing his resolve to get stronger and beat Hinohara. Hinohara dodges all of Yorinami's attacks as Kotoha slowly gets drowned in the water cell. Hinohara gets captured by Yorinami's time reversal jutsu where the captive will force Wit fall asleep as Kadawaki comes out flying from the air to join the battle. Kadawaki attacks Yorinami for taking Hinohara but gets captured, as well by Yorinami's jutsu. 
Yorinami brings back Hinohara to his childhood memories and tries to make him submit, however, Hinohara's will remain strong. Konova's voice wakes up Hinohara from his sleep and breaks Yorinami's jutsu, together with Kotoha, who will be successfully saved from the cell. Yorinami's Hayagami does not work anymore as it loses its will to fight. Yorinami, in grieve upon his mother's death, talks about his past to his Zokusho and how his mother made him thrive for an endless perfection. Yorinami opens the memento of his mother containing the necklace Yorinami once made for her. One of his Zokusho told him that all along he was wrong about her mother and that she cared for him more than anyone else. Hinohara officially frees Yorinami from the evil curse as he apologizes to his people. Katawaki appears once again to fight with Hinohara. Katawaki provokes Hinohara into becoming a demon and fighting him. He charges at Hinohara, but Hinohara runs away to escape. Hinohara uses Tsukubyo to defend himself from Orochi's attacks. Orochi's Kamui grew stronger and stronger to the point where Hinohara can't nullify it with his Tsukuyo anymore. Yorinami, on the other hand, decides to submit to Hinohara and his Hayagami, making Hinohara's Tsukuyo strong enough to nullify Orochi. Katawaki strikes once again with his Orochi, while Hinohara summons Yorinami's Nakisawa to deflect it. With Hinohara's resolve getting stronger, he slowly overpowers Katawaki, making the Tsukuyo glow and completely awaken its power, which led to the summoning of Sausi no Hinoa. Katawaki gets completely devoured by Sausi no Hinoa's light, leading to Hinohara's victory. Yorinami Zokusho all submit to Hinohara and his Hayagami.